All right. All right, you want it. This is on you. This is this is something that you're doing to yourself. Um, but it is kind of neat to see. Um, one thing I am going to do to make just the numbers a little bit easier to figure out, um, since that thing is symmetrical, I am going to chop that thing in half. So rather than finding the integral from negative 5 to 5, we're just going to figure out what half of it is. Doesn't that sound like a good idea, Mel? And then just double it because both of those pieces are the same size. So rather than doing this integral, we're going to do the integral from 0 to 5 of 25 minus x squared dx. Okay. So to do that, um, we have to do the crazy limit thing. Well, that's the point of this one is we, there's other ways to do it. Um, but we're going to do it via crazy limit methods. So um, I'm not going to write the two every time. But if we can just remember when we're done, we need to multiply this value by 2. Um, also, before we really, really go into this, let's actually make sure we know what the answer is, which we can do on the calculator. Pause. So if there wasn't any more of a reason why we don't want to do this crazy limit notation, is we can do all this on our calculator. Um, so we, I have graphed this thing, so I have to adjusted the window so that I can see the top of the curve, and so then I get this cool graph. Oh, what a great graph. I want to find the integral from negative 5 to 5, so I can go second calc, and there's this option down here, number 7. The lower limit that I have is negative 5. Upper limit is 5. And then, boom, it figures it out for us. It is 1.6667, so it's a repeating decimal. So if I quit out of here and I do a frac out of the answer that I just got, it should be 500, five, 500 over 3. So that is what this thing equals, 500 over 3. So when we're done, that's what we should get. So here we go. So, reminder, at the end, we're going to multiply by 2, but we're just going to ignore that for now. Let's start doing this. So, it is the limit as n approaches infinity, because we're going to do an infinite number of rectangles. Then we're going to do the summation, um, starting at i equaling 1 to n, so that we can add an infinite number of rectangles together. So, now, each one of those rectangles... I'm going to draw a sample one up here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. It's going to have a certain width. Um, so that is our delta x. So that's right there. So how wide it is, that's our delta x. Our full length that we're going is 5, because we're going from 0 to 5. But we're going to divide that up an infinite number of times. So the full length is 5, but we're going to divvy it up. If we had 2 rectangles, we'd divide it in 2. If we had 4, we'd divide it in uh, by 4. But we're dividing it by infinity. Uh, but we don't really know what that is. So we're, for now, we're just going to put an n. So 5 over n. That is our delta x. Then we need to do our actual function, which is whoop, 25 minus our x value. Now, what is that x value going to be? Well, here, I can point a little bit better with my mouse. So if it was like 4 again, we would move over a little bit, whatever our delta x was, and then we'd shoot up because this point is meant to be right on that curve. So we move over whatever our delta x was, in this case, 5 over n, and then we shoot up. Then we go to the next one, which would be the same distance over. So we do an, over another 5 over n, and then another 5 over n. So uh, the amount we need to move over each time is 5 over n. We're going to do it more than once. We're going to do it a whole lot, an infinite number of times. That is our x value. So we're kind of trying to find f of that thingy. So it's squared. You could also write this. I think it might, it might be a good intermediate step before I wrote all that, but you know, I didn't write this in the right order, so that's fine. I can't read that. Let's make that brown. Here we go.
No, it's got Sumis right now. Zoomy, zoomy. So if we think about this, this is our width across the bottom of our rectangles, and this is our length, the height of the rectangles, our x value and our y value um, for each rectangle. But we've got an infinite number of them. Why did I square that? I don't know why there's a square there. It's an f of that thingy. There we go. f of that thingy. So, all right, well, let's do it. So I'll go back to what I had before. So the limb, we know n is going to infinity, so I'm just not going to write that every time. We know our summation is going from i to n, so I'm not going to write that every time. And then we do f of this thing. So that is, our function is 25 minus x squared, so we need to do 25 minus 5i over n squared. And that's all being multiplied. by our uh, 5 over n. Now that 5 over n is a constant. It's like some value, like n we can treat as a constant right now. So we might as well just pull this 5 over n out of the summation. So we're instead doing the limit of 5 over n, and then all of that stuff that's in there. So let's break that up into the little pieces. So there's a summation of 25. I don't know why I wrote it at that time. So sue me. Then we've got this summation. So that is, and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So minus the summation of 25 i squared over n squared. And these are both being multiplied by that 5n, and then we're going to do the limit of all of that stuff. Okay, well, let's see. The summation of a constant is just 25 over and over and over again, so we're going to have an infinite number of 25s. Oh, boy. <laughs> Liam. All right. Um, that summation over there. I'm not going to do that one quite yet because there's still too much junk in it. That 25 and that n squared, uh, we can take those two out of that small summation there. So we get 25 over n squared. And then we get a summation of i squared. Well, according to our little tricks and tips, is if you have a summation of i squared, like we do right here, that can just become, I've got my notes here, n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1 over 6. Yep. And then we have our 25 n squared. Well, and then we have everything else. Because that's all I did in that step, is I just got that summation in there. Oh, eh, well. Can't all be exciting steps. Okay. Um, I think it's time to bring that 5 over n back in to this thing and do a little distribution. So 5 times 25 is 125. n divided by n is just nothing. So you get 125. Uh, this squared cancels with that n, so we don't need to deal with that. Uh, and that's all that will cancel there, so dang it. Um, so that gets us 25 times 5 is 125. And then uh, we still have that n plus 1 and 2n plus 1. 
over um, in the denominator, we've got n squared and we've got a six. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I'm just checking my notes. <laughs> I did this before the video just to make sure. I My first attempt, I got it wrong. So I'm glad I, I'm just trying to make sure I follow my notes now. Okay. Um, I do want to clean up that second one just a little bit more so that I can figure out what my limit is going to be. So this is 125 minus, because uh, if we FOIL that, uh, we get... 2n squared times 125, so that's 250n squared. Uh, and then there'll be 3n in the middle times 125. 3 times 125 is 375 n. Uh, and then it'll be a 1 on the n times 125. That'll be 125 all over 6n squared. All right, cool. Now we need to find the limit of this thing as n approaches infinity. So as n approaches infinity of all of that stuff, 125 will just stay 125, will not change. Then that big gross fraction thing, uh, it is a tie. Uh, when we're checking limit as n approaches infinity, you see who's going to win between numerator and denominator. Numerator wins, it goes to zero. If denominator wins, Wait, other way around. If denominator wins, it goes to zero. If numerator wins, it goes to infinity. This is a tie. So we take a ratio of the leading coefficients. This 250 and this 6. So it's 125 minus 250 sixths. Um, oh, we could simplify that a little bit. And so we could make that 125 minus 125 thirds. Um, ooh, that's good because we had to divide by three um, in our answer. So common denominators gets us 725. Nope. <laughs> 375. Gets us what? Oh, wait, 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 wait. All of this, be I forgot, I forgot. I forgot. Multiply by two. I was like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> this is all being multiplied by two because we only found the area of half. So we had to multiply by two when we were done. I forgot all about it. <laughs> um. So that's 250 minus... 250 thirds, um, which is 750 thirds. Here we go. Minus 250 thirds, which equals 500 thirds, which is what we got way back when. <laughs> Look at this thing. Look at this. Why? Why did you do this? <laughs> you do not need to do this for the AP exam. You will never be asked to do this. This is just so that you can see that it does work. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.